So whenever I learn something new about Modo, I tend to make a note of it in my Evernote file. And when I get enough of them together, I make a tips and tricks video. So here we are. Let's take a look. So real quick, this is a bobby spawner from We Happy Few. You've probably seen this on my air station. So I have that, that scene loaded and uh, another scene loaded that just has the bobby. And obviously, you know, I need to use the bobby with the bobby spawner to make sure that it's the right scale and everything. Uh, typically, what I would do is import the bobby mesh to this scene and place them and make sure that it fits. But I learned uh, just recently, kind of embarrassingly, that um, this item list to my right, um, in the same way you can turn, turn multiple meshes on and off in here, you can turn on multiple scenes. So the bobby uh, is its own scene and the reference bobby mesh is his own scene. Uh, but if I go down here and turn on the eyeball, um, that scene turns on as well. Now both scenes are visible within the viewport. Now I can't edit the Bobby because he's not part of the active file, but he is visible. And this opens up a lot of cool workflow stuff. So uh, give that a try if you ever want to have two things side by side but don't want to merge the files. So it's no surprise to anyone that I'm a huge fan of iPack that when it comes to packing UVs, but that doesn't mean that I don't use the auto packer sometimes, uh, especially since I found this one parameter that seems to make a world of difference. So this is the default pack you get just by hitting pack go, right? Uh, but if I call that pack dialog up and I change this gaps value from 20 down to say 10%, watch the difference in the pack. See, I'll toggle here a couple times, 20, 10, 20, 10. So with less of a gap, uh, the islands are bigger, the UV map is fuller, and it just seems to do a better job of arranging the islands. And I've done this on a couple of things now, and it's it's a perfectly usable pack, and it took about half a second to do. So uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're looking for a, you know, a good pack quickly. Now the one thing it doesn't do is uh, use the interior space on islands that have holes and that's something that I packed that can still do better. So you know uh, weigh your options and depending on what you're doing this might be all you need to do. So obviously something we do a lot in Moto is move things around and Moto is very generous with the options for doing that. Uh, you know with select through turned off and I turned on the movement widget I can click outside of the shape and just drag stuff around, which is fantastic for tweaking. But it's hard uh, if I want to limit movement to a certain axis, so like Z, for example, because if I click here and drag, it's kind of it's wavering and all that kind of stuff. Uh, to limit to Z traditionally, you'd have to find the widget and click on that handle, which can be slow. Uh, I discovered recently that if you hold the control key down and click and drag, uh, you get that access limitation. Uh, there's no way for me to move this up and down right now. It's locked to Z because when you hold control, the first uh, direction you start to drag becomes your access lock. So something that always drove me crazy in Moto was that when I would change values on something like say a material or an object or whatever, there's no way for me to get back to the default value. <laughs> well, there is and I recently discovered it. So this is the, uh, these are the uh, properties for this shader and this material. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, any field that has the little keyframe indicator beside it can be reset by right clicking it. So watch, let's say I changed my diffuse amount to 20% and I'm like, no, I don't like that. I make it 60 and I'm fooling around and then I'm done and I'm like, oh, forget it. I wanna go back to the default value. Well, uh, if I don't remember what it is, I can't, but since yeah, it's recording keyframes or, or something in the background. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but if you right click that little dot uh, and say remove all, uh, that snaps you back to the default value. So uh, that works on any field. So yeah, there you go. So that's it for this video. Uh, I've had some people ask me you know, how they can help out and support me. Uh, the best way you can do that is to share this video and tell people about my channel and drive traffic in here. That's really it. See you next time.